America. Well, here we are, America, and uh, we have the pleasure of Representative Lloyd Smucker. Now, the first thing comes to mind, sir, are you related to the Smucker family, the, the jams and jellies? D distant cousins, not close enough to count. You know, you know what they say. With a name like Smucker's. Yeah. It's got to be good. I thought of using it's that in my campaigns good. and decided I better not. But <laughs> well, <laughs> by the way, the uh, raspberry uh, preserves are the best thing on the market. Just, I brought you some. Just, no, I'm just, yeah. just throwing that out there. <laughs> All right, Representative, so you watch what's going on on yep. Capitol Hill. You watch some of the testimony going on today. Um, some Vindman is, is all, uh, you know, I, I, for me, the Vindman testimony was a little shady because he wouldn't answer the question of, from Devin Nunes saying who he spoke to in the Intel community about having a problem with the conversation. Well, if you're not going to tell us who you spoke to, likely it was the whistleblower. And then he would also not say who he spoke to on the Intel, uh, committee, the house Intel committee. So there's a lot of holes in testimony where do you think the Democrats are? How do you think their scorecard is going so far? So I, did, I didn't get to watch all of the impeachment. I'll catch up on it tonight, but had meetings during the day. But I did get to see some of John Ratcliffe's questioning. I thought it was very, very good. You know, it's, it's, it's pointing out that this really is almost impeachment by, by focus group. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea that for the first time throughout this entire process, we're using the word bribery. And that was done as a result of a focus group after they realized that the American people really were not tuning in and in some sense not buying what they were selling. Well, they couldn't so, understand quid pro quo being a Latin term, so the Democrats decided, hey, in, in the Constitution anywhere, so they decided right. to call it bribery. It's a little easier, easier to understand. Is there anything that raises to the level of bribery, in your opinion? No, not at all. Uh, and in fact, every witness so far has said there were no quid pro quo that they were aware of, and there was no bribery today. I think the witnesses were asked uh, that today. So no, this is a uh, fact of the matter is uh, we expect... We expect actions to be taken in return for foreign aid. We knew that Ukraine was a corrupt government. In fact, in the NDAA in 2017, we specifically asked Congress, 145 Democrats supported it, we specifically required the president to withhold aid until there were specific actions taken by Ukraine to, uh, to uh, combat the corruption that was there. So, a uh, couple quick thoughts. Um, both witnesses today, Vinman and Ms. Williams, who worked for Pence or was in the Pence uh, line column, let's call it in the Pence uh, column of authority, uh, both said that the, the transcripts were accurate. If the transcripts are accurate and the White House released the transcripts, what are we doing here? What are we talking about here? There's, they're not going to find some smoking gun. I leaned over to my wife and said, I, there is no smoking gun. You know? And she said, well, what about Nixon? I said, well, there was a smoking gun. He instructed, he knew about the break-in. He was aware of the break-in. He condoned the break-in into the Watergate Hotel and to tape Democrats' meetings. Now you have breaking and entering and, um, you know, invasion of privacy. He's broken two major laws, yeah. two, two constitutional laws. It, it, There's none, no such animal with this one. It's unbelievable. But they've been looking around for a, a way they could impeach this president, remove the president from office against the will of the American people for the last three years. So. Yeah, I mean, concerning, though, there was a recent um, poll out. percent of the people now agree that he did. He, he did impeachable offenses. Whether or not that means removing him from office, I think that number is far less, about 50 percent or so. So the more time they spend on TV, I think they're swaying public opinion a little bit. I don't know. The, 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 the sad part about all of it is that there are so many there are things that the American people sent us here to do. Yeah. So we, we are completely focused, uh, they are at least in Congress, focused. Uh, on trying to remove this president at the time that we should be addressing prescription drug prices. We should be uh, looking at student debt, looking at higher ed reauthorization. Uh, we should be doing the USMCA, which is very, very important to the district that I represent, to the farmers and the manufacturers there. We'll get there in one second. I just want to point out to our audience, I've had Senator Lindsey Graham, I've had Senator Tim Scott, I've had several senators on. And remember that when this impeachment happens in the House, which it will, it'll go to the Senate, both of them, I ask. In fact, Lindsey Graham right now is either chair or co-chair of the Senate um, Judiciary Committee. He says there are zero votes on, on Republicans to, to, at this point, from what they've heard, there are zero people, Republicans, that would vote to impeach the president. They need 20. That zero is far from 20. It's hard to get two or three, let right. alone 20. So make, make a long story short, it, interesting um, dynamic going on Capitol right. Hill. Uh, talk to us about the farmers. You, you have a, I, I assume, being in Pennsylvania, a fairly heavy agricultural district. I do. Lancaster County is the top agriculture district in Pennsylvania, one of the top across the country. 
uh, and I represent York County as well, which is a similar uh, situation. But uh, dairy is big mm -hmm. in my area. Uh, dairy farmers are really hurting. Uh, and as I said, we're one of the top dairy counties across the country. Uh, what, what a lot of people don't know is that Canada has been for years imposing very, very high tariffs against dairy markets, essentially against dairy farmers, essentially shutting out the market there. Uh, the USMCA, the new agreement between Canada and Mexico, will address that and correct that, providing for more markets for dairy farmers. Uh, and that's true for crop farmers, soybeans, corn, whatever it may be. Uh, this is a really, really important deal uh, for farmers in my district that are already really hurting. So there's a lot being made of the soybean farmers in the Midwest who are hurting because of the China tariffs and the China deal. The president has promised some sort of uh, bonus, a, a, a gift to hand out to the, to the farmers. Um, will the dairy industries feel any of that? So the, the uh, d dairy industry will benefit from open markets. I don't know that they're going to see direct uh, handouts, if you will, as a result well, of this. And, and let me tariffs. clarify, but, handouts, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. money that we're collecting from China yeah. on the elevated tariffs, President Trump has said right. he's going to use that to, to pay back some of the farmers for business loss during right. this trade war with China. Yes, so that I, makes sense. Not really a handout, but a, but a, a transfer of, of, of I have I have farmers from. and manufacturers in my area who are impacted by these negotiations or impacted by the temporary tariffs. They understand, though, what the president is doing, support what he is doing, but this is a way to help mitigate some of that impact until we get better deals. And by the way, if we pass the USMCA in Congress, it gives the president much more leverage with China, which will be equally important for the farmers in my area. Interesting. District. Very good point. Because then the, the dairy farmers can get behind uh, right. the, the whole leaning on China as well. Um, another topic that you're, you're involved with, it's something near and dear to my heart, the Criminal Justice Reform in America Workforce Reentry Act. Tell us about it. Sure. Uh, so I serve on the Ed and Labor Committee. We are going through a process uh, of higher ed reauthorization. Part of that is the Pell Grants, which at one point was... Uh, 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 incarcerated individuals, individuals in prison were eligible for education and for Pell Grants to help fund that education while they were in prison. That was taken out of the process during the Clinton administration, that, right. sort of that tough on crime. Right. We're now understanding that you know, 96 percent... Well, by the way, it was not reinstated under the Obama administration. Right. Interestingly. Uh, there are some pilot programs right now where it's uh, been reinstated uh, with very good results. We're now understanding, we, we know, first of all, we're incarcerating too many people, but second, we've been focused on just the punishment and not the rehabilitation when they come. 96% of the people are going to come back into society. I just recently visited one of the state presidents, uh, prisons uh, with CPAC. Uh, they did what they called prison CPAC, and we spoke to about 350 prisoners there and saw firsthand what is happening when these when some of the individuals there, the, uh, the prisoners, have access to education that begins to provide them tools that they need for successful reentry. So I absolutely support uh, doing everything that we can to make sure that those 96% of those prisoners who are going to go back into society, they don't come back into the prison. About 40% of prisoners who leave end up finding their way back for one reason or another. We should be doing everything we can to help them become productive members of society, and that's exactly first what step this act. Is. You were uh, uh, in favor of. I absolutely yeah. supported the first step act. It's the idea that we can do a better job uh, of ensuring that people can become productive members of society than just imprisoning everyone. Uh, of course, you have to imprison people who are a threat to society. Uh, but so I think uh, up to seven thousand people now in our federal prisons have been released as a part of the First Step Act. The next step is making sure that when they're released, they have the tools to become productive members of clearly, society. Clearly, clearly. Very quickly, tell us about the uh, economy in Pennsylvania. It sounds like it's been hitting on all cylinders. It's uh, going very strong. We have a strong uh, natural gas industry. Uh, and, and diverse industry otherwise, but unemployment at 
all-time lows. I tell people my daughter recently graduated from college. She had the best chance in 50 years of finding a job. She found one, yeah. which was great. But you know, people are seeing a uh, rise in wages. Jobs are being created in uh, Pennsylvania. This, this so here's uh, the issue in, in Pennsylvania: major, major swing state. 23 electoral votes, I think, if not more. 27, 18. 18? Yeah, okay, yeah. major uh, uh, influence on who is going to win the 2020 uh, election for president. There's an issue in Pennsylvania, suburban housewives, actually the suburbs of Pittsburgh and Philadelphia are right. problematic to Trump. What does he need to do to, to win Pennsylvania? Well, uh, th that, that is true. We lost in the past, in this recent municipal election, some counties in southeast Pennsylvania that's flipped for the first time in decades from Republican leadership to Democrat. But the story that you don't hear is that more counties in other parts of Pennsylvania switch from Democrat to Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, so Luzerne County, for instance, which But you're talking counties, you're not talking votes, because we know there's higher con concentration of populations in the suburban, major metropolitan suburban areas. Yeah, the bottom line is some of the suburban areas have moved away from Trump, but some of the Can rural areas Can and the win? union areas... Uh, have can, moved can he towards him. He's going to win again. Uh, he's going to win I, I, think, I think he will win Pennsylvania again. And in fact, I think this whole impeachment fiasco works against them. I get out to people in my district, uh, the majority of whom voted for Trump, still, mm -hmm. still uh, uh, wholeheartedly support him. They are fired up, ready to go to the polls. And I think uh, we're going to win again in All Pennsylvania. Right. He's going to uh, win again four more four Representative years. Lloyd's mark of the district is Pennsylvania 11. It's Lancaster area. What do you tell you? There's a lot of Amish in the area. Yes. It's also a adjacent to the Hershey district. Is that's that right? That's exactly right. Oh, we of, are the snack chocolate. capital of the world. The uh, both sweet and you salty snacks, by the way. snack capital of the world. <laughs> you said snack capital. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. America.